advertising is supposed to shove products down our throats. We all know that. At their best, adverts make us smile, laugh, even cry. They make us associate brands with feelings so that we'll buy them. That's the deal. And that's how it's been for generations. But there's a new movement in advertising. They're no longer shoving their products down our throats, just their identity politics. And the only feeling they're inspiring is extreme irritation. Well, Bud Light's the most popular beer in America, and for reasons which are not entirely clear to anybody at the moment, they recently teamed up with Dylan Mulvaney. She was someone who identified until very recently as a gay man, then non-binary, and now apparently is a woman, uh, and is an influencer who makes kitsch videos about womanhood and being a girl from the vantage point of, to be honest, a biological man. This month, I celebrated my day 365 of womanhood, and Bud Light sent me possibly the best gift ever, a can with my face on it. Check out my Instagram story to see how you can enjoy March Madness with Bud Light and maybe win some money too. Well, that went down as well as you could be expected, I guess. The response from Bud Light's customers was distinctly unenthusiastic. And the new Bud Light thing. I could be this thing, I could be that thing, or I could be anything. I'm out. Cancel Bud Light, you see what it is? We ain't drinking Bud Light. You can fuck around and find You may make it through the snakes and snares. Let me uh, say something to all of you and be as clear and concise as possible. little over the top there from Kid Rock. Now, I personally think unleashing Hellfire on cases of Bud Light with a semi-automatic rifle is a slight overreaction. You could just choose to buy a different beer. And as every British person will tell you, it's not really beer anyway, it's kind of fizzy urine. But the serious point is that a major brand is once again force-feeding an ideology onto its customers that they don't want to have. Many women were rightly outraged when Nike used the very same trans influencer to advertise sports bras, even though Dylan Mulvaney has no breasts. And these are not isolated incidents of corporate insanity. We had ads which promote taking the knee, ads which seem to promote mastectomies, ads which promote Black Lives Matter, ads with pregnant men, ads which wrap every single imaginable product, merchandise or service in the rainbow pride flag. And whether you support those case causes or not, many of them I do, the common theme is a business promoting a worldview that's kind of irrelevant and unfamiliar to most of the people currently buying their product. The most famous example of this was Gillette, the men's shaving company, which used to advertise like this. Gillette! Plus, with lubricating strip for the best a man can get. Oh, I made you proud to be a man, and that was the problem, unfortunately. Can't be proud to be a man anymore. Can't be proud to be masculine. No, no. Nothing laudable about a man who works hard, makes money as a beautiful wife, raises great kids and wins. No, 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 no. Gillette thought there was a massive problem with this. So they launched, in the light of Me Too a man-shaming attack ad instead. Take a look at this. Bullying. The Me Too the movement against sexual toxic harassment. masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? We can't hide from it. Sexual harassment is taking over. It's been going on far too long. I remember that ad coming out, and I'm, I've been a long-time Gillette customer. These cheeks, most nights, get the old Gillette treatment. And it makes me feel like a man, masculine, proud to be a man. And suddenly I had to feel ashamed. I had to feel like I was a monster unless I could prove otherwise. Why would Gillette do that? Why would it make their millions of male customers be ashamed to be a man? Well, the reaction, as I predicted in the column the next day, uh, was a disaster. I think it cost them $9 billion dollars over the next six months before eventually they just did a reverse ferret and went straight back to the old style advertising because men actually wanted to feel good about being a man. And that is still allowed. Just as Budweiser, clearly panicked by the backlash to their use of 
Dylan Mulvaney, have suddenly released a patriotic ad with wild horses, flags, landmarks, and a lot of burly men. Well, they played with the virtue signaling fire and their fingers were duly burned. The message to the advertisers is clear. Just shut up and sell us your tat.